everyone, I'm Lauren and welcome to another video from the Tiny Menagerie. Some fish have a well-deserved reputation for being difficult to keep, while others seem to get a bad press that they really don't deserve. Tiger barbs very much span the two, as they can be a delight in the right settings, but they can also be a real pain if they're not. They are hugely popular in the aquarium hobby for their striking orange striped coloration and their relatively small spires. But what are these lively little fish like to keep and what kind of setup do they need? Well, tiger barbs hail from the Malaysian archipelago and the islands of Borneo and Sumatra, where they inhabit clear, slow flowing waters in densely vegetated areas. In the wild, they can reach just over three inches in length but in the aquarium, tigers tend to max out closer to two inches, and even then, that is going to be quite a large specimen. As they're also a shoaling species, and so they need to be kept in a group of at least six, and they're very active, they do need a tank with a large footprint of at least 100 by 30 centimetres in order to give them enough space to swim and express themselves. Having been kept and bred in the trade for many, many years, tigers are also very tolerant of a wide range of different tank conditions. They will thrive in water between 21 and 27 degrees, at a pH between 6 and 8, making them ideal for the majority of community situations. One of the wonderful qualities of tiger barbs is their confidence. They are almost always out in the open, exploring and investigating anything new that you put into the tank. And for this reason, you can get away with a much less densely planted tank than you might need for a Shire species, for example. They're also unafraid of light, and even in the most brightly lit of tanks, they will proudly show off those fiery orange colours and be perfectly happy to be out in clear water without being skittish and darting to cover as soon as you approach the tank. In fact, tigers tend to be the opposite. They are smart fish, and they will quickly learn to recognise you as the one who feeds them. As soon as they spot you, they will start coming to the front of the tank and begging for food. And this makes them fantastic fish for keeping in the community aquarium. They bring out your shy fish, even sparkling garami, a traditional lurker of shadows, comes out when the tigers are around. This character can get them into trouble though. Tigers can be jumpers, especially at feeding time if there's a lot of competition with other fast fish for food, and so they ideally need to be kept in a tank with a lid, or at least an inch clearance between the water surface and the top of the tank. And competition is a big part of being a tiger. They quarrel and compete over almost everything. Social hierarchy, space, mates, it seems that they seem to compete for the sheer joy of it. They are the kids in the school playground play fighting halfway through a football match. They're very much a team who stick together, but they love a bit of banter. And they can often be seen sparring with each other as they turn all of their colours up as bright as they can, including this wonderful black edge to their scales, which gives them quite an edgy look. Tiger barbs look like they mean business, but actually, it is all just for show. They are a true shoaling fish, and they have a complicated language between each other so that each barb knows its place, and fights don't need to get physical. Most of the time, they are quite happy just swimming together, occasionally chasing each other harmlessly. When feeding, they go into what I call dart mode, where they stick their little fins out and they move in fast, jerky motions, but with their colours still subdued, and so every tiger knows this is about food, not fighting. And when they really mean it and a squabble breaks out, the fish will stick its fins out again, but this time they put on those darker colours as well, just so that everybody else knows this fish has a beef to pick with someone and they'll go into a nose-to-nose -nose contest for strength. In short, tigers are a complicated species, and whilst amongst themselves they are fine, when it comes to other fish, they can be a tad overbearing or even downright dangerous. Tigers make wonderful community fish so long as their tank mates are tiger-proof. Fast-moving or armoured fish are fine, 90% of fish are perfectly fine, the tiger's curiosity is no more than an occasional annoyance. But very slow-moving fish are likely to become a target to harass, and tigers are nippy in their curiosity, especially of flowing fins. And so you need to think about what tank mates are going to suit your tigers before you go and get any. Avoid betters, long-finned fish, stick with fish that are fast, alert and will see the tigers coming, Anything like danios, tetras, smaller cichlids, fish like that. Fish who are able to stick up for themselves a little bit. Feeding tiger barbs is very simple. They are as boisterous and competitive in feeding as they are in everything else. They will happily feed from all levels of the tank and seem to have a never-ending appetite. 
And so you will need to keep an eye on every fish in the tank when the tigers are feeding, making sure everybody is actually getting a share. Tigers will happily eat quarry and shrimp food from the bottom, so basically nowhere is safe from them. They will always find food and take it if they can. For small fish, they have quite large mouths, and so they can take quite big pellets, as well as white worms, blood worms, your standard flakes, pellets, and frozen foods. In fact, the only thing I've come across so far that my tigers won't eat is algae wafers destined for bristle noses. When your tigers have matured to about five, six months, you might be starting to think about breeding them. And being barbs, tigers are less than ideal parents. They are an egg scattering species, and once the eggs are laid, they show no parental care whatsoever. They will in fact quite happily consume their own eggs within seconds of laying them if they have the opportunity. Enticing them to breed is relatively simple, but offering them a good diet that's high in protein and then adding some fine-leaved plants such as limnophila is usually what's needed to get them in the spawning mood. Just make sure those eggs fall away from where the parents can reach them, otherwise they will become snacks. All in all, tigers are perhaps not the terrors that they've become known for. They are bold, eager and fast, but they don't really hunt other fish or even adult shrimp. They're just into everything, like naughty children, and sadly that means they can do damage to other fish if they can easily catch them. In the right tank though, and with fast tank mates, tigers are no trouble at all. In fact, they are a delight to watch as they are playful and entertaining, even if they do beg a lot after they get to know you. Anywho, I hope you've enjoyed this little video all about tiger barbs. Happy fish keeping everyone, and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye!